Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's a Tuesday night and I'm sat in my garage as you can see from the background behind me. A few days ago, uh, Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, made a very pointed remark about our attitudes towards the police in this country and she said, and I quote, the British public have lost respect for the police. Now my ears pricked up with that comment because I thought, well, you are in some ways correct, but there is a lot more to this, well, layer cake than you're actually admitting in public or, or willing to acknowledge. I did a video on this a few days back following it up. Here is the thumbnail for it about that comment, the comment that she made. And there you go. You can see over the title there and you can go and look at that video at your leisure. Well, looking at it, there were various comments that you made. And in this climate we live in, I suppose, where we're all worried about what's going to happen with our free speech and our ability to say what we feel, say what we think. And I'll be bringing another video out about that tomorrow. It's important that we get our points of view across so people can understand and see what we really do feel and looking at some of the comments that are coming across the overwhelming majority kind of mirror each other so without further ado let's have a look to see what you had to say on this video okay ian ship 5058 she is my mp and i have lost respect for her now there's one thing i want to say at the time of the Brexit referendum, I voted to leave. Now, the reason I voted to leave is, in my mind at least, there seems to be a, a chasm between, uh, you know, what is Europe and what is the European Union. I have no problem with Europe. I think Europe is a beautiful place and, you know, I, I want to go and see as much of it as I can. But what I have a problem with is the European Union. I, I believe that we should be able to freely trade with uh, the countries in Europe. We should be able to freely exchange information and ideas with the with the countries in, in Europe. It's all, you know, a trading relationship. Where I have a problem with is where you get closer and closer and closer political integration over the course of years. And it appears on the face of it, at least, they have more, more, of a, uh, more of a controlling interest over us than we really should have. And to that end, I voted to leave because I wanted to be friends with them, but I didn't want everything else that come with it, if you understand. Now, all of the people on the Labour side of the fence, Yvette Cooper included, Keir Starmer, and many others, they all said this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There will be no going back. We, we you know, we will honour the vote. And all of these people, her included, did everything to try and convince us that we'd made a big mistake and there should be another referendum. So I never had any respect for her, and I can appreciate her constituents that do feel the same. Bit of a long-winded response here, but needed to be said. Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, Keith Clark have no respect for the Labour Party, Star McCann and his police force. It's getting a bit like that, isn't it? Uh, but, you know, I, I've read some things about Sadiq Khan and maybe we'll address that with some of the things that are coming in. Uh, other low traffic neighbourhood suggestions. A little bit, uh, there's been mention of Paper Mile. We saw that coming. It's, yeah, it's all that stuff we were, we were fearful of. Uh, walks far 64. Well said, matey. Thank you. User Starmer and Labour are swiftly becoming a totalitarian regime. I think that the guy is uh, wary of criticism, wary of the fact that we may have a point as a people that there are things going wrong in this country and they need to be acknowledged. There's a video I did just before this one, go and have a look at it. And you can see an excerpt in there of uh, an answer to an interview question, a straightforward interview question. Tells you everything you want to know. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Sheila Lopez, 
Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, Gospel of Luke chapter 21. I shall do some reading. I'm not a religious man, but I think I know what you're trying to say. Old Mill 7858, respect is not given. It has to be earned. Yeah, too true. And uh, I've, you know, try, try to live by that through my own life. Uh, John Cato, the frightening thing is that it seems nobody in government even thinks there is a problem. Until they accept that, it could not be fixed. Well, they're not accepting it. What the what the problem they're seeing is our reaction to the problem that actually exists in dealing with that. Then you're left with the same problem, aren't you? Another username. I hate it when YouTube does that. I don't know who I'm talking to then. Uh, Yvette Coma. <laughs> Utter waste of space. Uh, I'm Kill1339. She overtly anticipates the reason this Labour government will be ki get kicked out. Not bad when it's only 40 days into its life. Yes, you can imagine four years, five years. Uh, Rishi M, 100%. I'm pretty sure it's the politicians listening to the establishment. John Walsh, there's no use complaining about loss of respect. Government is fully aware. Of course they are. They are just too thick, devoid of any coherent answer to the problem. They apply their own kind of violence in retaliation. Remember, violence begets violence. They know the root cause, but they just put cotton wool in their ears and sing la la la, Scooby Doo, etc. What a sad lot. Yeah, exactly. And you know, one of the other things that they tend to do when there is a when there is a problem they either don't want to acknowledge or or they don't want to know exists. They legalise it, and then it goes away, then it's no longer a problem. I've seen that stunt pulled many times, and I'm sure we'll see it again. Respect is earned, not given. That's Susan, again. That's a very valid comment. Uh, Melly Boy 58 we can have another vote. After all, they didn't know what they were voting for. <laughs> yeah, that's an old adage, isn't it? They hate us for rumbling their expenses theft. Hmm. That's going back a few years now, isn't it? Uh, Joe's web presence, all due respect to police, who do an incredibly difficult and dangerous job. But if they're not actually doing that job anymore, then what's left to respect? We see their fear and how they favour some over others. We see, see their obedience to their ideological indoctrination, like trust, respect is earned. And just like our politicians, the police have earned our deep and lasting mistrust and disrespect you know this whole thing that goes on with the police really horrifies me uh, i've said many times on this channel my father's a retired police officer he served uh, through the 70s the 80s and a little bit in the 90s before he retired and you know they were always out in the streets everybody knew their local police constable the local police constable knew what time the shops opened who ran the shops what their habits were when the deliveries came in they knew the locals they you know they knew what time joe uh, went for lunch at the butchers they knew the points to sit and listen and watch and there was very much the ways and means act and even the tiny littlest things that were out of place got dealt with before they were blown up into bigger things and that generation of police officers saw this rot starting to set in and said, if you do this, if you act in that way, then guarantee you this will happen. And a lot of those things said a generation of copper ago are now here. And it's a real shame, a real shame. They weren't all good eggs, mind you, but the majority were. And they damn well did the job. And I'm telling you now, the streets were safer. Can we get back there? I don't know. Let's have a look at some more. D. Watercraft, I would like to comment my real opinion. So can someone from government please publish a list of words I can say and type without getting arrested? I'm a non-violent, kind person who has had their freedom of expression removed. Typing hurty words or stepping outside your door while a certain demographic protested means I can get arrested. Somebody did actually get arrested for that, didn't they? 
going out of their house to see what all the noise was about. But, you know, I, I can see why you feel the way you do. David Hamer, I lost it when the bent when they bent the knee to BLM. I lost it when they painted pathetic rainbows over everything. Stalin stormtroopers. Yeah. Uh, Craig JP, Cooper is a very dangerous individual. She openly invites illegal immigrants into the UK and then shuts up anyone that disagrees with her views. Unfortunately, Labour have absolute power now, and the UK is fucked. That's the way it feels. There's, you know, there are ways of getting the message out there. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people will give up because they're too scared of the consequences. I, I had an interesting email uh, earlier this evening uh, along those lines, which I'll share with everybody tomorrow. So stay tuned. Uh, Paul Hinckley. Sorry, I can't comment. I'll get locked up. <laughs> There's another one. Uh, Labour politicians all to blame. That's Anthony. Uh, is that uh, El Tel? Uh, I feel sick to live in this country, and we've gone to the bottom of the pit. Uh, uh, somebody's put H. Not quite sure what that means. Uh, DDP84. Can someone not submit an FOI request or similar to get an answer in actual writing as to why certain individuals haven't been prosecuted? And in fact. Where are all the brilliant legal minds who should be standing up against what is happening right now? Surely there's some sort of recourse for ordinary people who can't protest, who can't show sympathy to little children hurt and taken, who can't even post flaming meanies, etc. anymore. Where's the protectors of our rights? I hear you. I hear you. That's, you know, this is the way it's going, isn't it? Uh, government control. We can't criticise. You know, I, I provide critique and I, you know, show your opinions. And, you know, you, you have this thing in the back of your mind. Is even that too far? I mean, there's, is it Section 10 of the Human Rights Act? We're, we're entitled to freedom of speech without prohibition. Hmm. Uh, Colin Kennedy, British public shall overcome this tyranny. I think we will eventually. We will. It's the way we do it. That's the important thing. Uh, express evangelist, I think, evangelism. The police have certainly lost it, but the respect for authority in general is completely undermined due to the abuse of the powers that are openly de demonstrated in front of us. There are simple rules to good balanced administration of good authority, but all those are being ignored as the big stick seems to be the only tool the current narcissist can apply because that's the only way he thinks. That's a very valid point again. Uh, Peter Fairfax, what happens to the guy who said cut the throats of the right? Yeah, he, he's been remanded until September. Um, he was charged and uh, on remand. Now, I want to follow that because, you know, a lot of people on the far right have been slung in jail immediately for, well, so-called far right, for, for doing whatever they did and they've gone they've gone to jail for months and very quickly sentenced now i'll be waiting and watching to see what happens with this guy when it does eventually uh, billy won at 4106 the police have lost both respect for the public that's uh, what it should have been said that makes it sound like we are the criminals now yeah. a uh, race sergeant it's both you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink that's an old saying isn't it very relevant too let's have a couple more lane splitter when police are spending more time trawling the internet for unsavory comments than protecting the children from gangs and stabbings it's any wonder there's video footage of the old bill turning up at people's houses for wrong retweets and that sort of thing isn't there right this is the last one uh, our once great nation is the laughing stock of the world. Surely keeping our borders strong and impe impenetrable should be the government's top priority. But illegal economic migrant young men who destroy their papers because they wouldn't qualify for asylum with them are flooding our country and all at our expense. Winter fuel already withdrawn, freedom passes and prescriptions will be next. Shameful and shocking. Yeah, I mean, all of your comments 
very much echo one another. You're all feeling pretty much exactly the same from, you know, the, the way you're coming across. And that last comment about immigration, what, what always makes me, well, I say chuckle, that's probably the wrong word. They go on about it, but they, they talk about it as a whole thing and they don't, they don't seem to concentrate solely on the biggest problem out of the immigration issue. And that's what's coming across the channel on a daily basis. We had, what, 700 the other day? No, nah, it's uh, out of control. And like one of the earlier comments said, they don't want to acknowledge it's a problem, which is a problem in itself. Well, that's that for that comment. Read back, everybody. Thank you so much for your support. We're closing in on 96,000 subscribers. So etching closer to that six figures, 100,000. And that's down to you with all your support and, uh, you know, appreciation you're showing for me and this YouTube channel. Please keep it coming. Hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, share me on your social media channels if you have them. And as always, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Toodaloo.